Let's factor 990. So 990, that's definitely divisible by 2, and that would leave us with 495. And 495, that's divisible by 5, and that would leave us with 99. And 99, that's divisible by 11, and that leaves us with a 9, and then the 9 can become a 3 and a 3. So we see that 990 is 2 times 3 squared times 5 times 11. And this is actually an application of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And the fundamental theorem asserts two things. The first thing is you are able to write 990 as a product of primes. And the second thing is there's only one way to do it. So here's the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Suppose n is an integer larger than 1. Then n is either a prime or a product of primes. And number two, the factorization of n into a product of primes is unique except for the order of the factors. And in order to prove the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we're going to need the well-ordering principle, which says that every non-empty set of positive integers has a least element. And we're also going to need a generalization of Euclid's lemma. And that says if a1, a2, all the way up to an are integers, and if p is a prime number and p divides the product of those integers, then p has to divide one of those integers for some i, where i is between 1 and n. So let's look at a proof. So here's what we're trying to prove, and we're going to look at part one first, the part that says n is either a prime or a product of primes. So let s be the set of positive integers that cannot be factored into a product of primes. So you can see we're going to try and work towards a contradiction here. So we're going to include the case where there is only one factor also. So throughout, uh, keep that in mind. By the well-ordering principle, s has to have a least element call it n. So remember, s is the set of positive integers that cannot be factored into a product of primes. And so there must be a least element, and we're going to call that element n. Since n is not prime, we can write n as a product of a times b, where both a and b are between 1 and n. And since n is the smallest positive integer that cannot be factored into primes, it must be true that a and b can be written as a product of primes. But n equals a times b, so n itself must be a product of primes, and this is a contradiction. For the second part, this, this part's a little trickier here. In fact, for both of these, these are the kinds of things where I might kind of go through them and see if you understand step by step, but it's not something that you would likely be asked to produce on an exam. Um, but still, nonetheless, it's good to understand the proof. So part two, let s be the set of positive integers with non-unique prime factorizations. And by the well-ordering principle, we know that s has a least element. We're going to call that element n. So then we can write n as p1 times p2 times p3 all the way up to pr. And that's also equal to q1 times q2 times q3 all the way up to qs. Because remember, we're saying s is the set of positive integers with non-unique prime factorizations. It means there's more than one way to do it. So again, we're going to look for a contradiction here because we know that's not the case. So we know that p1 has to divide n. This means that p1 also has to divide q1 times q2 times q3 all the way up to qs, since n equals the product of all those q's. And by the generalization of Euclid's lemma, we know that p1 has to divide one of those q's. So for some j, has to divide a q sub j. But both p1 and q sub j are prime. And p1 is greater than 1, so it must be the case that p1 equals qj. So remember that we said that pi and qj, all the p's and q's, were all primes. And we know that p1 has to be greater than 1. And so it must be the case that p1 equals qj. So we're going to reorder the q sub j's so that p1 equals q1. We're just going to relabel them. And we can cancel it out from both sides. And so now we have p2 times p3 all the way up to pr equals q2 times q3 all the way up to qs. Now we know that p2 all the way up to pr multiplied together, that has to be less than n because n was p1 times p2 times p3 all the way up to p sub r. But n is the smallest positive integer with a non-unique factorization. So therefore, we have to have that r equals s, and that all the p's are the same as all the q's, except for possibly the order. And we know that this is a contradiction.